Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the West Marches. I'm JP McDaniel. This is week five, we determined before the cast goes live. Got a brand new cast for you guys. Let's go ahead and unmute them. Steven. Hello. Is the foremost returning member of the show. How's it going, man? How's 2015 treating you? Uh, 2015, so far, has been a good year. It's four I days only, thus far. Only good things to say about it so far. Nice. Um, yeah. I, uh, I'd like to return, JP to an old, old, uh, and what do you call it, tradition uh, okay. of ours, and talk about what's been in my mouth recently. Okay, what's been in your mouth recently, Stephen? Or at least what's going to be in my mouth recently. Now you're getting weird. Soon. Um, now you're getting weird. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, I had uh, like a dinner and movie night with some friends recently, and I made um, Japanese braised chicken thighs, which is originally a recipe, a recipe for... for Whoa, whoa, pork, pork, pork belly? I'm hearing my son myself back, JP. Yeah, it's Zeke. He's got that Zeke. feedback power. Oh, man. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, you braise these these chicken thighs in, like, sake and, uh, and, and soy sauce for, like, two hours, and they just fall apart, and you eat them with some hoisin sauce, and it's just, like, meltingly delicious. So I'm making that for lunches this week, and then I also made a huge pot of chili for dinners. So I've got, like... Five uh, five chilies and five five lunches of braised chicken thighs, and I'm super excited about it. Nice. You were also you know, in uh, in rally, so you had a bunch of good barbecue. That's also okay. been in your mouth. Uh, how am I sounding now? I should sound a little clearer. You are, yes. Excellent. I switched over to the real mic. Yeah, no, I went down to Raleigh for uh, for Christmas and got to see my parents and a whole bunch of my old friends. So I ate like. Uh, barbecue ribs at the pit in downtown Raleigh, and it's it's super delicious. Mm -hmm. um, I went to a place called Big Ed's, which is in downtown Raleigh, kind of just a southern food style place. I had a Cajun chicken biscuit, and then as a side dish, I had a biscuit covered in gravy, sausage gravy. <laughs> it was Great. so good. It Sounds awesome. Um, what else did I eat? I ate. Uh, I went to Gonza's Tacos y Tequila, and I got a flight of tequilas and uh, some you know, a carnitas tacos or something like that. It was all delicious. Oh nice. my goodness. So, great. Uh, 2015 all, sounds amazing so yeah, far, man. What, what has been in my mouth has been awesome. So. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Let's find out what yeah. everyone's been up to as well. Everyone else has been up to. Co, we'll just start off what's been in your mouth recently, man. Anything amazing? What's this channel rated? <laughs> uh, um, NC-17, probably. I've, it's been uh, there before. <laughs> But uh, so, what have I been up to? I guess. Yeah, and also, I'm serious. What's been in your mouth? What what amazing? Pseudo what's the best thing that's been in your mouth since you've been on the show last? My wife last night made a puff pastry with a uh, a dry rub pork, potato, bacon, four different types of cheeses, seasoned to perfection inside of this amazingly buttery golden crispy crust. What and the I fuck? And I, it's amazing. That's yeah, pretty good. Man. <laughs> That is not fair. <laughs> that sounds pretty good, yeah, man. There you go. <laughs> sounds pretty good. How's that? Uh, how's 2015 been going for you, man? Oh, it's been great, man. It's been absolutely great. It's been a lot of fun, and we've got we've got some major releases coming up in the first four months. Everything's just been fantastic. It's been good. And then me and you, we're gonna be gone in hell the end of this week. We yeah. Big release after that. Yep. With so a lot of stuff going on. Big things. Big things. Indeed, indeed. Ezekiel the third, sitting over there. Uh, I like oh, your beard length, man. Today. Your beard <laughs> length is great. Yeah, you sound fine. You sound fine. Oh, good. Okay, good. I switched to this the webcam again. It just it just works better. It's you know better for the situation. So yeah, yeah. So how's twenty fifteen, man? Uh, you know what? I've had the best, possibly arguably the best year of my life, um, <laughs> and twenty fifteen is just looking better. You know, everything's just going really well. Um, I'm getting to do what I like to do, and. Uh, Role playing, I always get really excited for role playing, so I'm jacked. I gotta ask you as well, because that's the other two best thing in your mouth past couple of days, or since uh, you've been on the show. It was a lightly uh, glazed um, little Debbie sticky bun, and it was put mm. in the oven at 23 seconds, and mm. or not the oven, but the microwave at 23 seconds, and it just melted in my mouth, and then I had. Um, uh, uh, to wash it down, I don't know if you're a day drinker like me, but to wash mm. it down, I had a little bit of of the old Irish whiskey, some Jameson there. So uh, 
Here's to your health. There you here's go. 2015. There you go. Starting the here's, show. Here's all right. to not having our characters all die. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, cool. Last but not least, the newcomer to the show, Trump. Welcome to Roleplay, man. How's 2015 going? It's great. I uh, started off with some really cool games I've been playing just before I came here, actually. I, was I saw you were Rest selling stuff. Oh, you were, what was that? Well, you were selling something on your, your That's stream. That's right. Like, it's a pure value game where you uh, <laughs> buy and sell stuff and you get and pick stuff on the ground and then you sell it and then you try to gouge your customers. It's really cool. Nice. Nice. <laughs> what is the name of that game again? Uh, it's called Rusted Tear. Rusted Tear. Old Biscuit tier. suggested it to me. I was like, oh, yeah. He's like, yeah, it, it's right up your alley is the Mira Valley town. So Interesting. Very cool. Interesting. And I got to ask, uh, best thing in your mouth thus far? Oh, right, I feel like well, we're going to get a show and tell. Got to say, my uh, mouth feels minty fresh right now since I am eating nice. a Lifesaver breath mint. Is Delicious. it a wintergreen one? Nope. Just a normal, oh, just a normal one. We could have asked you to like turn out all the lights in your room and then crunch it in front of the camera so we could see all the sparks go off. <laughs> and I got some bad news. I recently shaved my beard. So. Yeah. No. Yeah. We, I forgot to give you the memo that you have to actually have a beard uh, when you're on the show, but it's Whoops. okay. We'll make an exception this week. Uh, we, we made can one make for it, like, Dodgers. We like a beard ball. communal pool and we can just send it to him. We can just cut like a little bit we off. We could. Of yeah. It's true. We probably, it might get there before the show ends. We could. We could. <laughs> See, it would like just <laughs> random lengths of beard like glued to his face. <laughs> yeah. It would look fantastic. It would look fantastic. Great. Uh, well, let's go ahead and start the show, Stephen. Uh, I think we also need to do some, because Trump, Trump, have you, I guess we should ask, have you played D&D before? Are you well versed oh, yeah. in the so, world? Oh, it's really. I'm really happy that you guys invited me on. Thanks. Uh, nothing like playing with a great crowd like you guys. Uh, yes, I've played off and on with friends, online, etc. Okay. And I know you also play Mafia with, with Ryan. So you're well versed in the, the role playing world and, and saying bullshit and speaking bullshit. So I think you're going to fit right in. <laughs> All right. Shouldn't be a problem. Uh, Steven, what's going on in the world of West Marches? So, uh, yeah, like, I think most of you are familiar with what the West Marches entails, but the idea is kind of like, it's a world kind of inspired from, like, Russian and Polish uh, fairy tale and stuff like that. So you guys are all in a town on the uh, western edge of civilization. The town is called Vitaraskali, and you guys are all in a tavern called Frelka's Tavern. And Frelka is, let me see if what I can tell you about him. Uh, his name is Frelka Tristen. He's a 34-year-old man, human male, um, and he runs this tavern in Veriscali where, like, anybody of ill repute comes to drink and uh, and find other people who are dissatisfied with their lot in life and basically form groups to go out into the wilds and test their skill against uh, whatever may be out there. So most people in the world, they really don't venture out beyond the borders of their safe their safety, their, their towns and villages. Um, but you, for whatever reason, you're not content with what the world has to offer you uh, and you want to go take what you can. So um, generally like you guys all sort of meet and gather and talk about what you want to do and then form a small group, head out into the wilderness and see how successful you can be. Uh, just to give you a little bit of lore here, um, in the human pantheon of the kingdom of Lorien, which is the kingdom to the east of Veriscali. Um, Veriscali is technically a, a village under the protection of Lorien, but it's a very, very remote border town. Anyway, in this kingdom, there is a um, there is a goddess, yeah, called Hevera, who is the wall maker, and she's the goddess of borders and the protector of towns and she is the one who basically keeps civilization safe against the encroaching of the wilds so everybody sort of knows whatever's out there is dangerous we stay here mm. so um yeah you guys are all sitting at a, a table that you guys have come to recognize as one that's used by a number of groups as they venture out into the wilderness and it's got this little uh drawing of vera scully etched into the center of it you can actually see this in roll 20 if you pull that up um, and there are a couple of notes that have been carved into it. Arinadia equals Basilisk Slayer, Lasari, Basilisk God, a day to the south, plains, etc. And you all can also add your own carvings to this table as time goes on. Okay. So feel free to update it as we go out and explore. So um, 
you guys should all know by now about what you've you found from the notice boards around town. So either, you know, like a guardsman in town, you know, either Rose Porgid, one of the guards, or uh, maybe Bodo Lyron, the town crier. Um, from these people, you've heard a number of things. One, um, there's a group of thugs that's harassing the villages outlying of Viriscali, of uh, Castal to the north and Nola to the south. And the thugs bear signs of plague. Um, and the Viriscali garrison captain is offering um, a 50 gold piece bounty on the leader of the thugs. His name is Anod, and he's missing an ear. Uh, there's a small conclave of hunters to the south, led by a woman named Sabin with Yui. Uh, the, the report from her is that game has grown very set, scarce to the south of Eriskali, and that what's available is stricken by disease. Um, there's another report from Breda and Guard, who uh, is the I think she's the the parish priest at Le Poul in the southeast. Um, and he's been expecting a shipment of iron ore uh, two weeks late now. She's put out word through local towns looking for someone to investigate the missing shipment. It was supposed to route through Viriscali, coming along the eastern road let, he, leading out of town. Uh, also, there are a whole bunch of like people starting to get interested in Viriscali since uh, like a couple of people have gone out and brought back you know a few small gems or small coin pouches. You know people are starting to take notice. Havard Mickelson has been talking to a few folks around town about hiring on as help for local adventurers, and there are people who are interested in doing that, but they need to see coin first. So Havard thinks that he could establish an AIDS guild if he had a one-time investment of a hundred gold pieces. And that would unlock the ability for you guys to purchase hirelings to bring with you on your adventures. Mm. Um, and there's a couple of others, and I'll actually just post this in chat so that you guys can just be aware. I did earlier, but there you have it. Um, yeah, the mayor is looking to sell a couple houses. Uh, the parish priest at the Temple of the Border Wall uh, is looking to hire an additional scribe so that she can study herbology more and uh, alchemy. So those are the sorts of things that are going on. Um, who are you guys? Let's go around the table and talk about who we have here. Um, first, we've got Kurthak Ironjaw, right? Mm hmm. Returning character. Uh, what is this the third session? I think, think Kurthak's been around for three sessions now. Yeah, first session I played a pissed off half elf named. I don't remember. Isilla. Isilla, there you go. Because like they were you... Isilla's boys. There you go. Yeah, uh, Isilla left the crew, and now I'm playing Kurthak, who. Uh, somehow ended up with Juliet and caring for her child, which was she got impregnated by licking a demon spawn in her nightmare. Some fucking crazy shit happened. And mm -hmm. uh, now Kurthak is with Juliet here in town looking over the baby. She's somewhere in town. I guess we've got another uh, inn. Do I need to pay for that, by the way? I guess I need to pay for the inn. Oh, yeah. Let's figure out how long you've been here. So let's see. You, you set out... For about five days last time. Well, actually, it looks like you were out for about seven. And I subtracted uh, that, but I need to know the however yeah. long it's been for the, the So end. since then, it has been... Oh, yeah, no, it was it was the 28th last time. You've been in town for an additional five days now. Okay. And uh, you were put up at a house, right? So you got it yeah. for one GP a day? Yeah, because cool. the mayor was giving me a, a break or something yeah, like so that. Yeah, so today is June 3rd, by the way. Okay. And uh, summer is starting to warm the air. It's starting to get very nice. And for someone who someone was asking in chat, like, are these multiple timelines that are going on? No, there's only one timeline, um, especially if there's a character who's returning. So, like, Kurthak can never go on adventures while he's already out on an adventure. If we had an entirely different group of completely different characters, they could potentially go out on an adventure during the same time some other group is out. Mm. But generally, time moves forwards, and the seasons pass, and stuff happens. So, yes. Um, and the rest of you, uh, Kurthak, do you know any of these people or did they just uh, sort of wander into Frelka's Tavern recently and start chatting with you? Yeah, I would say that I just met these people, met the rest of the party, uh, in the tavern because I was trying to get the fuck away from Juliet, who's just driving me crazy, being yeah. a pregnant, crazy person. <laughs> oh, uh, roll 1d6. <laughs> oh, great. Please. We're already doing the random rolls. This is awesome. Uh, okay. Great. A one. One. Okay. Um, the the worst thing that you've seen from Juliet is just when her morning sickness takes her over and she spends half the morning vomiting into like a, a ditch out behind the, the house. Okay. That's all. It's nothing too crazy, right? 
Gotcha. Cool. So, uh, Zeke and Co., who are you guys playing? Well, I am Maldrick Ironheart of the clan Ironheart. We are dwarves from under the mountain. Uh, we are brothers, twin brothers, um, born at exactly the same time. That is a lie. I was four minutes older than you. <laughs> well, yeah, the, notwithstanding. <laughs> uh when we come of a certain age in our in our clan in our society, we venture out to see if there's any uh, way we can improve upon our um, dwarven society, much like a rite of passage. And it's more important now than ever because I'll let you take a coat. Basically, what's been going on is the iron in our city, which we've been working for generations. Uh, it's there's there's two types of iron, and we kind of mine around the harder stuff to get to the softer stuff. And unfortunately. This, this stuff that's been pretty much sustaining us for hundreds and hundreds of years is running out. And we've been sent out with many others from our, from our clan to find a way to either somehow work the iron or clear it faster. Just figure something out um, so we can keep the city learning. Or find a different place to go. Find, yeah, find a place to possibly relocate our clan. And uh, we've planned on traveling far and wide and... Uh, Anything along the way that funds our major quest is fine, and I think that's probably what brought us all together, is that uh, um, we need gold to fund travels, to, you know, to buy information, yada, yada, yada. Mm. Awesome. <clears throat> cool. Uh, Maldrick, what do you look like? Um, well, I'm the shorter of the, of the pair um, by six inches, which is quite a lot for dwarven uh, people. Yeah. Um, we look very similar. Um, we actually uh, uh, discussed that we looked we looked very similar, but uh, we didn't discuss like beard shape or, you know, hair <laughs> style or anything like that. But uh, I think that I would have since I'm in the in the I'm a cleric, I'm in the uh, um, in the order of um, um, of a boy the Order of Avoid, the God of War, and um, uh, Trickery is the, are his domains, but he's also the God of Guards and Vigilant Watch and stuff like that. Um, but I would think I'd be more, like, better quaffed, nice braids in the beard. I'm, I'm imagining just, like, some, some like, nice, thick, dark brown beard. And, um, uh, stash or no stash, Co., what do you think? I think I think I think stash. Yeah. Stash. Okay, so we have the whole thing, the whole thing, and uh, properly. Got the big iron rings in there, you know. Oh iron. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely, with our with our family with our family crest on it, which is like just I'm I'm a, I'm just assuming it's like a nice like it's like a heart with like. That's a, exactly uh, what it is. Yep. Exactly. It. It's like a, a heart with that looks like it's been bolted and constructed. The oh, and also have like a like a holy symbol with a spear like thrusting towards the sky. And that's in your awesome. chest. That's on your armor. The holy symbol. It's, it's in our yes. beards. Oh, it's in your it's beards. In our yeah. <laughs> it's in our beards. Yeah, we have big talismans in our beards. Gotcha. Talisman. As like a braid. As like a okay. The beard is Perfect. actually grown into the talisman. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> it just goes like through it, and like there's just one like big talisman right there. Because I'll I'll let go of my talisman as soon as I let go of my beard, which is never. There you go. Awesome. <laughs> and uh, Sheldrick, what do, what do you look like? I am, of course, much older than my brother. Therefore, much more experienced, wise, more refined in every way. Um, <laughs> but it's uh, I I look similar. I am a rogue myself, so I I'm wearing leather armor. It's kind of a, it's very normal. My my whole life, I have been kind of watching Maldrick as he kind of progresses through the, the cleric as or through the through the through the clergy as a cleric. I've been the rogue kind of in the back ends, facilitating everything he needs, keeping an eye on him while trying to make my own way as well. Um, very focused on, you know, persuading and things of that nature. But my my look is very similar to my brothers. In fact, we look very similar except for a few minor things. Um, except I'm wearing leather armor, darker leather armor, a similar beard, beard style with a few variations, um, but all in all very similar. And I'm, I'm, oh, sorry, I'm wearing a, a scale mail, just in case you're wondering. 
Mm. Awesome. <laughs> uh, what kind of weapons do you favor, Shaldrick? Uh, I have two short swords on my back, two daggers in my belt, and uh, that's about it. Awesome. And who is our, our fourth newcomer, or our third newcomer? Trump? What kind of Hello. character are you? I am Donald Bartholm Bartholomew, and I'm a human. Uh, I look like a noble, so I've got these fine clothes on, uh, blue with a nice light blue cloak. Got this expensive looking necklace on, I got a signet ring, everything shouts noble. Uh, on my side is a rapier. I look very refined and out of place in this tavern. JP's yeah. got a link. Why? <laughs> yeah. Why are you in this tavern? Uh, are you noble, noble Donald? I'm here because I am, uh, as a noble, it is important to understand the common life as well and the adventuring life. So I have wandered over here to experience it firsthand. Okay, good. And and you sort of found the most the most common, most adventury looking people you possibly could, and then attached yourself to them. That's correct. Nothing like a bunch of stout dwarves, and I've heard the tacticianship from this individual here. Mm. I also should and, note that I'm a half orc, just so everyone yeah. is aware. <laughs> Kurthak, Kurthak looks strange. Like as as a human of of the kingdom of Lorien, and as, especially as a noble, like you you have not seen someone like Kurthak very often. He is. Like, basically what people tell the children that the boogeyman looks like. So, yeah. All right, great. So, what do you guys want to do today? It's June 3rd. It's partly cloudy outside, but uh, weather's warming up. It's starting to really move into springtime. Uh, well, I guess I, I'm just looking around the table. Uh, and I'm like, I'm, I'm up for... And yeah, I just got, I have to get away from Juliet. Like, I, I need a day to myself. So, whatever you guys want to do, uh, the, tw the two Dwarven brothers, it, if you guys want to go find iron, it doesn't matter to me. And, uh, look, I'm, I don't even know if you belong here, uh, Mr. Normal Donald, but we'll do something if you if you want to. Just uh, just get me out of this town. All right. Money well, iron if I may, I have a suggestion which should surpass those silly notices that yeah by, by all means yeah well certainly we could go eliminate this bandit this thug we could see some we could talk to hunters but the true adventure lies in the more exotic and i've heard about talking birds over to the southeast of the stark world a bird talks this this town gets what what are these birds saying what have you heard there i hear that they are looking for help from someone in a tower and if these are talking birds then surely the reward must be much greater than those of dealing with a bandit or with hunters um, so i'm going to i'm going to look at my brother and kind of say you know a talking bird could give us a lot about the area that could tell us a lot about what's going on around here maybe where to look I agree. I think uh, anything that gives us more information about what may lay ahead of us um, and the opportunity to make some good gold would be uh, beneficial. I'm, I'm with it. I'm with you. Uh, Donald, I, I think we're I think that was an easy sell. I think we're interested. In, do, do you have any uh, anyone in town that perhaps Knows more about this? Have you heard anything? Who told you that? Where'd you hear these rumors from? I've just gathered bits in, bits and pieces from this tavern itself. So, perhaps we can find a little bit more information out here. Okay, I uh, I slam down my drink when he says this and stand up and just scream into the bar and just go. Does anyone know of any talking birds? <laughs> anyone? Uh, give me a. Uh... God, what kind of role would that be? Intimidation. <laughs> Man, um... Yeah, in lieu of using any sort of knowledge role, I'm going to have to go with uh, either persuasion or intimidation. Your choice, Kurthak. 
I will take intimidation because otherwise okay. it's a minus one. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kurthak stands up and like Great. there's a couple of people over in the corner and they just sort of Great. look up and then you hear them go, "He's doing it again." <laughs> and then someone someone else says, "Juliet must be really wearing on him." So, Kurthak, uh, yeah. if I may make a suggestion, um, not that I approve of it, but my brother is versed in the arts of getting what he wants out of people maybe he should have a try, have a try at it oh yep sure okay sure and by the way whoever said that about my wife i will find you and i will kill you I is Juliet down. your wife now <laughs> i just say that and i sit down regardless of if she's my actual okay now wife. now everybody's saying it's Juliet his wife now? <laughs> uh okay so ryan need to write down that rumor rumor that yeah and the world evolves before our eyes yeah <laughs> So I'm going to clasp uh, my brother's shoulder and stand on the table, which makes me slightly lower than average height at this point, and then kind of look around the room and say, so... Uh, before, while he's walking up on the table, I want to... Uh, I love these these cantrips. I'm going to throw um, the uh, uh, um, thaumaturgy, which is kind yeah. of like minor shit, and I'm going to uh, raise the volume of this voice like by double or whatever. Nice. Yes. Can I do that? Just boom. Yes, you can. Just say a silent awesome. prayer. So I stand up. Pardon my abrasive friend. We're simply looking for a way to fund our adventure. Does anyone know of any talking avian fowl in this region? Uh, so Fraka stands up and he, he walks over to you. He says, uh, you know, listen, um, you might try... Uh, speaking with Hilda, who lives on the north side of town, I heard her saying something about, um, you know, birds visiting her house regularly. You could try there. She's a, she's a farmer and uh, a seamstress, but she might, she might have some information for you. I kind of look up as, almost as if I wasn't paying attention. And what, what, is, what is this? What was the name? Hilda. Hilda Hildegard. Sounds sexy. Uh, guys, we can't go. We can't go there. I can't visit her. What's I, the problem? I. She she is not. Uh, look, if if we go, I'll stand outside. You guys can go in. I I won't go in and talk to her. Sounds can good to me. me. Can I use a persuasion to to on, get, try to get the rest of this story? <laughs> what on him? I, uh, you know, <laughs> on a player character, <laughs> skill rolls on player characters don't really do a lot. So you might have to oh. just convince him to uh, to get it out of him. So you guys set out and you start heading through through the town of Veriscali, past the the stables and past the uh, the temple to the broken wall, and or to the border wall. Sorry, and um, and off to the north side of town. There's a there's a road that leads north to Castal, which is about an hour and a half's walk away, something like that. So, um, yeah, on the way, Kurthak, do you elaborate any about what's the problem with Hilda Hildegard? Uh, are you asking, Shelter? So, what happened between you and Hilda Hildegard? Uh, you not, well, you could just ask her. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. And, that uh, by the way, please don't, well, don't say that I'm with you. I, I don't want her to know that I'm, I'm outside. Consider me a ghost as we enter into this stupid, stupid person's farm. <laughs> well, <laughs> first act, <laughs> information is power, so if you let us know, perhaps we could not have a misunderstanding. It, it is, you. You, you know, Donald, it is powerful, and that is why I'm, I'm keeping it uh, from the three of you. <laughs> Again, pl feel free to ask for Hilda's side of things, but I, I will keep it to myself. And when you guys have the information, we will uh, get out of here immediately. Because this, I hate this farm. <laughs> I just keep walking. All right, so you guys head out to the north of town, and you know, like um, uh, buildings become sparser, and there's like a couple of farmhouses, and there's one, and the, the guy told you which one was Hilda Hildegard's house. It's the one with a, a, a blue rooster's head painted uh, above the mantle of the front door. 
I, I just kind of like, I'll, I'll be out. Good luck. I'll be outside. And I just kind of like start walking down the road a little bit so I don't look like I'm going anywhere near the, the farm. I suggest we send the pretty one and the, my, my brother, the silver tongue. I, su- I suggest we send those two in if they can as to not intimidate her. And uh, Kurthak and I will stay behind outside. Sounds like fine to me. I also have a way with words. You look like you do. You also look like you've had a bath in the past week. (laughs) Right, Sheldrick? (laughs) You say that like it's a bad thing, brother. (laughs) Let's do it. Let's walk up and knock on the door. Okay, cool. Um, You you go up and you knock on the door. Um, And it's like mid-morning, so you you hear someone bustling around inside, um, like, you know, you hear the clanking of, like, cups or something like that, Uh, and she comes stomping over to the door, and it creaks open, and there's a short woman, she's, like, four foot four, and she's looking up at you, and she says, Yes, what what is it? What do you want? Well, speak up, speak up, you dandy. (laughs) I stand back and let the noble talk first. Oh. Hello, my dear. We have come seeking information about talking birds. What? 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 Eh? What's that? Hilda, talking birds. Do you know of any? Talking birds? Birds don't talk. They they yammer. They sing. They shout. They're, they're I, loud and noisy. I kind of get her attention. Today, I refer to the avian variety. The ones that fly. Flying bards? I, I, I've never seen such a thing in my life. Would you like some tea? Sure, thank you for welcoming us in. Please, come in, come in. And you go inside, and it's like, you know, it's a little cluttery, but she obviously keeps, like, the floor swept and, like, you know, cobwebs cleared away. Um, but she maybe doesn't put, like, dishes back in their proper spot. So she starts, like rummaging through and finding a couple of pewter cups and, and pouring out some tea from a teapot that's, that's been brewing. And she says, now, now, let me think. Yes, I think I remember a flying bard once long ago. It was the story of, of, of a, a bard. That, what was his name? Let me think. Um, his name was Aniert, yes, yes. And he flew from cloud to cloud until he found a castle. And then I think... He was squished. Not a happy ending. Is that what you were looking for, dearie? Do you like your tea? Oh, oh yes. The tea is fantastic. Thank you. I, I take a sip and I continue talking. Well, while that story is amazing, what, I'm, what I seek is the bird, the flying animal, not a human, not a... A bird! Yes. Oh, yes. yes, of course. Okay, yes, no. I, I did find some flying birds once. Did they talk? Oh, talking birds! Yes, yes. I heard some talking birds. They flew down my chimney, and they sat in the fireplace, and they said something about something about a, a poisoned stream flowing out of a forest and, and a man trapped in a tower. Oh, it was dreadful, just dreadful. Almost as dreadful as the last person who drank my tea. And you see her just, like, get really furious for a second. Oh, goodness. Who would do such a thing? Your tea is lovely. Yes. So I'm in yes. the back, and I just kind of pipe up, and I go, Kurthak. And she just, like, her eyes, like, zing to you, and she says, what did you say? (laughs) Nothing. Uh, nothing. That rat bastard brought his wife here. Yes, he needed a tea for her stomach. Yes, it was upset because she's pregnant, because she's a whore. And she drank the tea. Kurthak went outside. He was feeling a little uncomfortable, so he didn't see it. But it happened. It did. He doesn't believe me. He calls me a liar. It did. It happened. What happened? She threw up. I got a glance at the noble, wondering where we go from here. Ah, I expected something worse. But it wasn't just any throw up. No. She threw up maggots with little faces on them. Little baby faces. 
they were on my countertop crawling around and crying and and wailing with their little baby voices <laughs> So about those birds? Yes, well, birds, well, you know, yes. There is a stream to the east of here. It is all dead. I don't know what happened, but it sounds like the birds are, are, are acting correctly, speaking, speaking truthfully. I haven't heard one in quite some time, though, probably four or five weeks. I'm not sure. Did these birds give any indication to where the tower was? Well, they, they, they seemed to say there was some kind of connection between the tower and the stream. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Okay. Thank you very much for your assistance. Oh, and your tea is lovely. You're quite welcome, and I'm so glad you didn't puke. Yes. Um, so while you guys are in there... Let's find out what's going on with uh, Maldrick and Kurthak outside. What are you guys doing? You guys are just like hanging out with inside of the door, just kind of like down the path from, from the house? Yeah, I would say I've, I've just kind of like kicked a leg up and I'm leaning back against some wall with uh, Maldrick nearby. I don't, I'm not sure what he's up to, but I'm just kind of keeping to myself. Okay. And Maldrick, what are you doing? You're muted. Thank you. I actually stayed behind on purpose. Uh, so I could uh, talk to uh, talk to uh, Kurthak. Okay. Um. Now, before I start, the boy is the only one who can judge us, and he judges us on the field of battle. But you are an orc, or at least part of an orc. I'm just kind of like nodding. Our we're not going to have any trouble from you, are we? What? I I understand your concern. I, I think the orc that, that you have run into and have not been of my lineage. I, I've served uh, a royal family for much of my life. Oh. I, I will not uh, cause issues. In fact, so I would... you were a slave. I, uh, I kind of I stop and just stare right at him and say... Uh, no, I, w I was paid for my services, and I could have left at any time. More mercenary type than slave. They, wait, <laughs> they paid an orc. A half-orc, yes. Well, will wonders never cease, but boy be praised. <laughs> I just kind of, like, sneer. My well, eyes kind of, like, narrow down in your direction, but I don't do anything as, about as, it. As long as you're fit to battle, and you're... On my side, I have no problems with you, Orc. Very good. Very good. We, we shall... It'll be okay. It'll be okay. Uh, I agree. Maldrick, would you mark inspiration for yourself? Okay. Cool. So, inspiration, uh, in case you guys didn't know, which I think you all do, because you've all played before, um, you, can, you have it only once, and whenever you have it, you can choose to give any uh, attack roll, saving throw, or ability check. Uh, advantage, which means you roll 2d20 and choose the best one. So, you can do it whenever you want. And it's to your advantage to do it regularly. So You, you can also, give, to you can also give it to someone else as well. Yeah, you can give it to another player. Yeah, yep. before they roll. Excellent. Excellent. So, okay. Um, so, uh, Donald and Kurth, uh, or sorry, Donald and Sheldrick. Um, the woman says, you know, there, there's this stream that's to the east uh, that flows out of the, the, um, out of the Starkwald. And the birds seem to think there's some kind of connection between this dead stream and uh, this, this tower with a person trapped inside of it. So that seems to be the most direction that you can get from her. Is this a landmark which immediately comes into obviousness or is it not obvious? Um, she tells you that if you walk east, you will have to cross it at some point. It flows between the Starkwald and the Rayfen, so if you're walking along the plains between those two, then you'll come across the stream sooner or later. Good enough for me. Sounds good here. I'm okay. in. So you guys are going to set out? 
do it. Yeah, I think All so. Right. Yeah. I don't think we're getting so, horses or anything. So, so who's before leading? we do... Oh, oh yeah, so go ahead. Let's before go. we do, right, as we start out on our first steps and and Donald and Maldrick are getting a few steps ahead, I kind of hang back and I kind of tap Kurthark on the thigh. <laughs> and he looks down. I kind of look up at him. And I look back at Maldrick and I look at him and I said, he didn't give you any trouble, did he? <laughs> I look back and I'm just like, uh, your your brother is is his words are much like weapons, uh, at least in our conversation. You, he'd be wise to guard his tongue more carefully in the future. So, I kind of put my hand on my forehead and I go, "Look, I'm trying to break him of this. It's it's the clergy. They they're clouding his mind. I'm sorry. Just understand, he's a good guy." He's not. Just give him some time. He'll warm up to you. And, I, and I'm sorry about that. Oh, it, it's not a problem as long as he holds his own uh, in battle. We'll, we'll be fine. Uh, more importantly, what, uh, what lies did that... What lies did that woman tell you? Inside most the farm. fantastic... T- oh, sorry. No, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm done. No, it's, go ahead. Go ahead. A most me. fantastic tale. Apparently, your wife has a... M- your wife puked maggots. I, I I completely break con- eye contact with uh, with Sheldrick and just stare and almost like grab you, put one arm on you, and I'm just like, that never happened. It never happened, Donald. You understand me? Are we all hearing this? Yeah, I'm not keeping I, it. I from think anyone. you guys are close enough. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It's like Donald, please. It never happened. Do you understand? Well, we shall see. Perhaps the woman is delusional, and perhaps... The woman is my wife, Donald. It never happened. Very well. Very well, indeed. I just, like, look at the other two and start walking. I kind of I kind of nudge nudge my brother. Imagine what those kids are going to look like. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh. I just shake my head and walk a few steps forward. <laughs> what? That was funny. What's the Punnett square for two half orcs? Okay, know. good. I don't know. So it's uh, it's partly cloudy today. Who's leading the party? Uh, and who's navigating for you guys? Ooh. No, are we moving. We're not moving to a city, correct? Correct. Okay, I've got some stuff for cities, but nothing outside of it. Yeah. What uh, what is navigation based off? Is that wisdom? Uh, it'd be survival. Yeah, wisdom. Survival. Uh, I mean, I can I can lead if no one else is feeling up to it. I, I would assume the directions were told to me. Um, yeah, the tallest and clearly can see the farthest. And there's no oh, tunnels to follow. I don't know how you get around out here. <laughs> okay, I I okay, I, so. I I take up leading. Kurthak first, and then uh, followed, I guess, by Sheldrick, Maldrick, and Donald, just sort of in a group. So, uh, the way this works is we'll have to roll a navigation check. All right. So, let me see. Yeah, so I you're... Says, uh, what direction are you traveling in? Southeast, was it? Sure. I thought the, I thought we were going east. Is it just east? What? What did... I think the old lady said east, but I could be wrong. Yes, east until we hit our river. East okay. until we hit the river. Those are the directions. Okay, and you're traveling by foot. Cool. Yeah. So go ahead and roll to see uh, your navigation. Uh, so based off survival, right? Mm-hmm. All right, 15. Ah, not bad. Okay, cool. And um, yes, now would you roll 2d6? Mm-hmm. 10. 10. Excellent. Roll 2d6 again. Seven. Hmm. Roll 1d8. Five. Okay. Okay. As you're strolling along the side of the road that's leading to the east, it it just leads straight out of town. You guys naturally started following it. You come to... um, Oh, yeah, no, I should check that. Hmm. 
Yeah, uh, you come to um, <clears throat> you come to like a hilltop, and you see from the horizon. Uh, let me see. Actually, how far can you see here? How far can I see? I'm looking at how far you can see. Oh, oh. oh. Let me see. Yeah, it's been about an hour and a half that you've been on the road. Um, so you are, you're a ways behind or a ways away from, from Vera Scali. And I think you can see all the way to, um, to the Stark Wall. You can see this wall of forest far, far to the north, uh, just on the very edge of the horizon. Okay. And uh, coming out of the forest, you see like a, a dark cloud and it flies towards you. And it passes overhead, and you can see um, approximately 40 or so giant bats flying past you. Okay. How, how, when you say giant bats, how big are we talking? I am trying to verify that right now. And this is in the and middle of the day? They're not engaging us? They're, they're just like flying over our heads past us? They are large. So they're like bigger than you, Kurthak. Okay. Like, you might even be able to ride one, that kind of size. Gotcha. Um, yeah, they're just flying past you. They, they flew in a cloud out of the forest to the north, and they're flying over the skies. And it's, it's, it's very gray, right? It's just like a gray, a gray summer day. Um, and they fly past you and uh, continue off to your right, which is to the south. Okay. I just kind of like watch them fly over. And then make sure everyone's still good to go. I'm just like, oh, we're almost there. I just can't keep walking. Excellent. Um, is is no one going to mention these just, things? Just some bats. I uh, did, you know. We're just some bats. Just some bats. You've seen bats. Yeah, what to be expected when you're. Oh, I've seen bats. Like. Yeah, it's exactly. Much exactly. Than flying Donald. away from where we're heading. Don't you agree? My brother has a good point. Yep, he does. He does. Let, let's continue. No, just bats. Don't worry about it. I am never one. taking my eyes off the sky. <laughs> okay. So I imagine Maldrick it's been like that like... your entire life. <laughs> <It's kind of laughs> <walking>. Awesome. <laughs> so you go for like another um, another fifteen minutes or so, and the road starts curving around to the south. You can actually see, uh, like, at the very edge of the horizon ahead of you. Um, you can see the uh, the Starkwald curving down to the south into your path. Do you want to follow the road, or do you want to just keep trying to head due east? I definitely follow the road. Okay, I, cool. I, I suggest the part, like, we, we should follow the road, even though it is going a little bit uh, off off our path. It, it is probably safer. Cool. Two quick things. Do we see a tower from where we're standing? No. Is there any significantly higher ground nearby? Um, I mean, there's like hills and stuff. But you none that would try... offer like a real... Would any of them offer like a good advantage to looking in the area? Well, what you could do is you could spend four hours sort of like scouting around your current area for a high point to really give yourself a vantage point if you wanted. My thinking here, guys, is we locate this tower she was speaking of. It should be large enough to at least see from a distance. Uh, I guess I do like a, a circle spin. What what is the nearest highest point of vantage from us, Stephen? Uh, so give me a perception check. All right. Uh, what is my perception? Oh, it's actually high. Nineteen. Very nice. Okay, like if you spend um, like two hours, you can make your way over to a hill that's you know a little bit distant. Course, kind of close to the Starkwald, actually, so you'd be heading a little bit north. But um, it's clearly a much more dominant sort of uh, rocky outcropping that's thrust up out of the earth. You think you could probably see further from up there. I'd point to that. And be like, we, it's a little bit off the track, but we can make our way over there if you wish to uh, find this tower. I look at him and nod. Okay. I'm barely getting used to this whole grass thing. <laughs> Just like uh, Donald is... Does this work? Should we go? Get Sounds a like point? a plan to me. However, isn't this hill? Is it, am I correct in thinking it's in the southwest of what we would be, of the Starkwald, since we're coming from the west? 
Uh, so you're heading towards, so the Starkwald sort of like arcs over top of Veriscali. So you're heading in the direction of the southeast section of the Starkwald. So that, that is sort of where you were told to be looking. All right. The hill is an excellent vantage point. We should make our way there. All right. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll march our way over there. Good. Right behind you, cutie pie. Uh, as we head off, can I get you to um, to roll another 2d6? Sure. Seven. Seven. Okay, great. Um, you, you make your way over to the hill uneventfully, and you climb your way to the top. Um, let's take a break here. Okay. And uh, I'm assuming that as it's been like a maybe, you know, three or four hours on the road, you guys are going to sit down and eat and drink some. Um while you guys are taking a little lunch break, we will also take a quick break ourselves. Cool. All right. We'll take our first break of the day, and we'll be right back after uh, about a five, six-minute break. We'll see you guys then.